Hi mamas, it's Carrie from Reset Brain and Body here with you for this week's Mental Health Mondays. So today I wanna to talk to you about why we quit or why we cannot change or why setting new habits are hard or why we cannot keep commitments to ourselves. So I know for a lot of you, New Year brings this new sense of inspiration to say, okay, I'm going to develop some new habits for myself. And hopefully you've set some realistic goals for yourself and not just a blanket, um, I'm gonna be able to fit into my pre-baby jeans without any uh, other <laughs> discussion on the layers that perhaps are needed to look at in order to get to that point. So anyways, I wanna talk about, first of all, how we form habits. So many of you have probably been taught that in order to make a habit stick, it needs to last for two weeks or three weeks or maybe even three months or six months. And I'm here to tell you that take that time out and throw it out the window because it's not about how long that you engage in an activity that then makes it a habit and makes it stick. It's actually really simple, three things. So first, you need a reminder. So for example, I wake up at 5.30 every morning, uh, most times. <laughs> and so the reminder for that is simply having my alarm be set and setting it the night before, right? Making sure I'm gonna set the reminder to wake up at 5.30. And the routine then is, okay, I get out of bed, I change into my exercise clothes, I go downstairs, I have my lemon water, I have my coffee, I make the kids breakfast, I prep anything else I need to, and then at 6 a.m., between 6 and 6.30, I know that I am downstairs doing yoga or meditating or some other type of me exercise. The reward, the th third R, is that then I know that I took care of myself before I took care of anyone else. Reminder, routine, reward. And it has to work sequ sequentially. Now here's the issue though, is that a lot of us set rewards that are really hard to reach or really set ourselves up for failure or are focused on the wrong thing. So for example, if I set up this whole morning routine about, um, okay, I wake up at 5.30, to work out because I have to work out because I have to lose 15 pounds, let's say. Well, is that really a reward that's going to continually motivate me? Is that actually one that is serving me? Is that a healthy thing to focus on? And I know for me, it's not. And when I instead focus on the mental health component of giving myself that space in the morning to take care of me, that's the thing that keeps me coming back for more. The reward is the feeling that I have from being like, okay, I took care of me. And that way I can stay really fluid in that time that I've carved out for myself and that it can be anything from a really intense hit workout if that's what I want that day, or maybe it's sitting on the couch and reading my book for an hour and a half before the house wakes up. The reward is different than something that perhaps is more disingenuine or a reward that's based on a should. So when you go to build new habits, think about it and break them down in reminder, routine, and reward. And the key is looking at the reward and really making it something that is really impactful to you, that isn't just fleeting. Because what happens, for example, if you set it on some type of, you know, super tangible type of goal, well, and then you reach that goal, and then then what? Does this whole habit just go out the window? I think there's a lot of people, and maybe this is when you were younger, but you see it happen where a lot of people say, okay, I have summer coming up, and I want to feel confident in my shorts. And so they make this goal about feeling confident in their shorts, and then by the time summer comes around, maybe they're feeling better, and then all the things that they did, all this practice that they had to get to that point go out the window. I always joke, um, some of my colleagues and I joke with the fact that there are certain things that you don't know how good they are for you until you let go of them. For me, that's having my lemon water. There's something about it that when I don't do it, I'm like, oh, that's why I do it. Or when I stop meditating, I'm like, oh, that's why I meditate because I'm like, oh, 
everything now feels chaotic <laughs> because I wasn't doing my meditation. And my meditation wasn't just some, I'm gonna meditate for 30 days, or I'm gonna have a streak for two months where I'm meditating every day for at least five minutes. And then when that streak is over, you're like, woo, I win. And then you let go of it. That's not actually a fully habit forming reward. The reward is everything feels easier. I have more space, I have more clarity. My anxiety and my depression are better balanced. That's the reward that keeps the habit going on and on and on. Because what's the most frustrating thing in the world is when we have these good routines where we feel grounded and confident because we're taking care of ourselves, and then we let them go. And then we wonder why everything feels a little bit off. But what happens if, let's say, everything is going well and you feel like it's the right reward, but it still isn't sticking and we just quit. And a lot of times the reason is because we get bored. My husband and I were having this conversation just the other night where we said, man, like we're feeling so great. Everything is moving along. Um, we're taking care of ourselves. We're like, but like what's gonna throw us off this train? And we both said at the same time, boredom. Why is that? Why do we get bored so easily? And this is super biological, really simple to break down. And that our ego biologically is chasing for an indulgence, for satisfaction. It's what is ingrained in us to want to reproduce because we want that high. We want that ah, accomplishment feeling. It's biologically built into us to seek that out. So when you are sustaining and some type of commitment to yourself that feels really grounding and safe and nurturing, but not necessarily this rush of indulgence or this rush of reward, well then the brain's gonna be like, no, no, hold on, <laughs> this isn't fun. This feels like pain. This feels like sacrifice. This feels like compromise. This feels like scarcity and I want more. And so biologically, we actually have to retrain our brain that no, 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 actually boredom, I'm okay with. Simplicity feels good. Doing the same thing over and over again, routine is actually what th makes me feel alive and what helps make everything else feel a lot better. So when the alarm goes off at 5.30 in the morning, and you're gonna go into the same thing again, you might say, oh man, this is hard. I don't wanna get out of bed. This is painful. But that's because we're not focused on the right reward. Versus if you say, no, 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 I do the hard things so that everything else feels easier. I have this space. I have this nurturing for myself. I have this ability to feel grounded and clear headed. I'm better with my kids, I'm calmer. I'm more confident because I know that I've taken this time to commit to myself and following through on that commitment to myself feels really good and it means that I've empowered myself. That's the staying power. We do the hard things so that life is easier. When we do the easy things, life remains hard. Okay, so furthermore, taking this one step further, even if we know all of this is true and we have this habit and we're developing things, we end up self-sabotaging. Why? Why do we end up self-sabotaging? Oh, our kid is sick one day and then that you didn't wake up and you didn't really take care of yourself and you got thrown out of your routine because he's sick and you know it's okay because it's about the kid. But then the next day it's like, oh, well, I stayed up really late last night because I was scrolling on social media because I didn't really want to go to bed because I was kind of mad at my husband. And so then I couldn't wake up in the morning. And then the cycle continues and continues and continues where we keep making these excuses, we self-sabotage because we once again fall lower on our priority list. Why? Limiting beliefs, stories we have about the role that we must play who we think we should be to the world. This is the deeper stuff. This is the stuff that continues to create obstacles for ourselves when we try to put ourselves first and take care of ourselves and empower ourselves to do the things that make us feel good for the long term. So you have to peel back those layers to understand, all right, what is this? Why do I feel like I'm letting people down all the time when I actually say no? Why don't I have these good boundaries? Why do I feel like I have to be everything for everyone? 
we have to look at the roles that we started playing probably really early on, early childhood, and that we reinforce over and over and over again with these illusions of satisfaction versus actually living in our truth. So some of you know this, some of you don't. I was hit by a car last week. I was walking just downtown Plymouth and um, a woman turned left into me and I was smacked to the ground. And the hardest part of this experience was, of course, the initial trauma and fear and just, oh my gosh, what just happened? But more so, it was actually getting myself to sit with the discomfort of not being available to everyone else. I had to cancel my entire rest of the week. I canceled all of my clients. I couldn't care for my sons in the way that I wanted to. I wasn't making dinners. I wasn't prepping breakfasts. I wasn't doing the things that I felt like people expected of me. And it really made me sit and think, like, why do I put this pressure on myself? I don't think I'm important. I mean, I really don't think that I'm that much more special than any of anyone else. But I realized that for so long in my life, I was kind of always put in this role to be available, to help be responsible for other people's well-being. And I really don't like having that responsibility, but it's still there, even in times when I need to rest and I need to heal and I need to take care of myself. And I've realized that even though I've put in these practices, these habits, to nurture myself and take care of myself, I still feel this deep responsibility to other people. And so this is a perfect example of having to sit back and say, why? Why do I continue to do this to myself? Why is it so hard to say no, to relax, to rest, to slow down? And this is the stuff, you guys, that hopefully you can work on with a therapist or a family member or a friend that's non-biased and can be objective with you. But I know for me, it's a constant journey and there are reminders that we're gonna have in our life that make us stop and think and say, wait a second, something feels off here. Why am I continuing to play into this story that I have about myself or these expectations? So backing up, summarizing. Habits are not formed through time or smart goals. Habits are formed through Reminders, routines, and rewards that are authentic to your entire well-being, that are truly felt into the core of who you are. And then with that, we have to look at the way in which we talk about rewards. We have to dismantle the stories that we have about short-term versus long-term and really come into our truth. And then in doing so, we're empowering ourselves. We're continuing to put ourselves as a priority, we're honoring ourselves, And if we can't and we self-sabotage and we make excuses and we make ourselves fall off that list of who to take care of, we have to dig deeper and look at why. Hopefully this was helpful or inspiring to you. We are always here at Reset to help you with any of your mental health and wellness needs, your self-awareness and your self-discovery journey. Thanks so much for sharing this time with me today.